The Parliamentary Budget Officer has calculated that in every province, 60 percent of Canadians pay more in carbon tax costs than they get back. Everybody knows it. Justin Trudeau knows it. He needs to stop lying. And <clears throat> thank you very much, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Jazz, and thank you to the great truckers who work in this incredible facility, moving goods and services across our country. I think they will agree. When they fill up their tank, when they go shopping themselves, these truckers will tell you that after eight years, Justin Trudeau is not worth the cost, crime, or corruption. He's not worth the cost. You see that every day at the grocery store. When you take the items out of uh, and put up, run them through the scan and you see that number getting bigger and bigger and you sometimes feel like you have to put things back in the cart and return them to the shelves because you can't afford to pay the bill. This is a common story now. One in ten Torontonians are going to a food bank after eight years of Justin Trudeau. One in ten. you imagine that? One of the biggest and wealthiest cities in the world. Two million food bank visits a year in Canada. That's a record-smashing increase of 32 percent since Trudeau took office. Next year, we expect a million more annual visits because food prices continue to rise faster than wages. After eight years of Justin Trudeau, we've had 28 dead bodies in, a free, in freezers outside the St. John's Hospital next to a dumpster because their families can't afford a burial or cremation. These in Aramukto, 50 military families are eating at the local food bank. Military families who risk their lives for us are not getting enough to pay for their groceries. After eight years of Trudeau, there are now 35 homeless encampments in Halifax, in one city. These encampments are now visible everywhere you go. The food professor, Sylvain Charlebois, reveals that after eight years of Trudeau, not only is the price of food going up, but the amount Canadians have to, to pay for it is going down. In other words, most families are spending less than is necessary to buy their families an affordable uh, basket of a nutritious basket of food. That means people are going malnourished. Scurvy, scurvy is making a comeback after eight years of Justin Trudeau. These are the real world consequences of Justin Trudeau and the NDP doubling the national debt, raising taxes on middle class and poor Canadians. Trudeau famously said that the economy is not about numbers, it's about people. Well, I hate to break it to you, Justin, but numbers affect people. In fact, as Pythagoras said, numbers rule the universe. And numbers are the things that you see on that receipt at the grocery store. Numbers are the things on the price billboard at the gas station. Numbers are those little digits on the screen when you're looking at your monthly mortgage payment. If you're brave enough to bring it up on your screen, those are all numbers, Justin. And those numbers impact how much food are in the bellies of people, or whether they have roofs over their heads, or whether they have to work 70 hours a week just to avoid eviction. Numbers rule the universe, and unfortunately the numbers are cruel for Canadians after eight years. We know this policy, the, these results are the direct uh, consequences of Justin Trudeau and the NDP policies. When you double the national debt, you drive up demand, which bids up goods. You print $600 billion of cash, and that causes inflation, just like it has everywhere and always over the last 5,000 years of economic history as far back as we can go in human records. Whenever governments create cash, they cause inflation. And what is he doing now? He's out making multi-billion dollar announcements of inflationary spending that will drive up the cost of your living again. It's like he's a... He's spraying billions of dollars out of a fire hose, but it's more like spraying gasoline on the fire. He's like Justin Trudeau promising to fight inflation is like a pyromaniac promising to fight a fire. He's the one that lit the fire with his taxes 
and his deficits. And every day you see him in these photo ops, know the money that he's spitting out of his mouth is money that will come out of your pocket, just like it has for the last eight years, and all with the help of Jagmeet Singh. Common sense. The good news is, life was not like this before Justin Trudeau, and it won't be like this after he's gone. He's not worth the cost, crime, or corruption. Canadians are good and decent people. They do not have to give up on the things they used to take for granted, like affordable food and homes, all for the ego and incompetence of one man. Common sense conservatives have a plan to axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. Axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. In doing so, we will restore the Canadian promise, the promise that was made to our, my friend, uh, my friend, uh, all of my friends behind us today, but particularly to Jazz Raj, whose family came here with, with a, a small bank account but big dreams. And he went on to start a business, build homes, and become a member of parliament. The promise made to my family when I was born to a 16 year old uh, unwed mother who put me up for adoption to two school teachers, and they raised me to believe that it didn't matter where I came from, it mattered where I was going. It didn't matter who I knew, but what I could do. And that's the country that my wife came to as a refugee and in which her family has succeeded. That is Canada's promise. Though it is broken now, we will restore it. And today we demand the government reverse the policies that have destroyed the middle and working class people. But we are making three specific demands for Justin Trudeau for the forthcoming budget. First, axe the tax on food and farmers by passing C234. That will take carbon tax off farmers' barns and drying to provide food price relief to Canadians. Two, build homes and not bureaucracy by requiring cities permit 15% more housing completions each year as a condition of receiving federal funds. Three, cap spending with a dollar-for-dollar -dollar law to bring down inflation and interest rates. The dollar-for-dollar -dollar law will require the government find one new dollar of savings for every new dollar of spending. By capping government, taxpayers and the economy can catch up with the cost. We can balance the budget again and bring down inflation and, and, and interest rates. This dollar-for-dollar -dollar principle is the one that single moms, small businesses, and seniors use to run their finances, and it is what we are demanding the government uh, implement as well. Again, ask the Trudeau tax on food and farmers. Two, build homes, not bureaucracies. And three, cap the spending with a dollar-for-dollar -dollar law to bring down inflation and interest rates. This, these are common sense demands, and if we don't get them, we won't support the budget. Common sense conservatives will continue to fight for, for everyday Canadians who work hard, pay their taxes, and play by the rules until the carbon tax election comes. And in that election, we will have a simple choice between a costly coalition of J Justin Trudeau and the NDP who tax your food, punish your work, take your money, double your housing costs, and unleash crime and chaos in your community, or common sense conservatives who will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. Thank you very much. Let's bring it home. Thank you so much. We'll now have time for a few questions from the floor. There, uh, Clayton Demain with True North. You said you'd, uh, in the past, that you'd work toward meeting Canada's NATO target of spending 2% of our GDP on defense. Where would that money be spent? And under your do dollar for dollar plan, where would you cut to account for that massive spending? Well, where would it be spent? On the front lines, better equipment and better resources for the men and women in uniform, uh, more reservists who are uh, not only equipped to prepare Canada for an armed conflict, but also can apply the military skills they learn in the civilian economy. Uh, where will we, how will we do the dollar for dollar rule? Well, we're going to cut back office bureaucracy, botch procurements, and foreign aid to dictators, terrorists, and multinational bureaucracies. We'll bring that money home and invest it in our military. Thank you. Thank you. Next question.
Steve from TVO. Hi, Pierre. Could you describe your relationship with Doug Ford? Uh, he's the premier. I'm the leader of the federal opposition and the next prime minister of Canada. And uh, my uh, relationship with him is the same as with everyone. I will work with anyone to axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Uh, Michael Drapak, CBC News. Thanks, Mr. Polyev. Um, six premiers are now calling for a first minister's meeting with the prime minister on the carbon tax. He is not committing to that. What do you think that says about Mr. Trudeau when he refuses to meet with premier leaders as a group? And what does that say about federalism and how it should work? Merci beaucoup. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Justin Trudeau is, uh, has a radical agenda to massively expand the size, cost, and power of the federal government, which comes at, exp at the expense of working people and seniors. It, it crowds out everybody, including the premiers. He wants to dominate over all of the regions of Canada and impose his will. He's imposed an unconstitutional anti-development law, C-69, and a, a back-breaking carbon tax opposed by 70% of premiers and Canadians. If Justin Trudeau is so sure of his plan to quadruple the carbon tax to 61 cents a liter, he should have the courage to sit down with our premiers and explain that to them because they oppose his plan. They know that his tax is going to take money away from hospitals and schools who have to spend more on their energy, take money out of our uh, local social services who will be paying out more assistance to people who can't afford to eat. It will force more social breakdown because people uh, can't keep it together. So he should have the courage to sit down with the premiers and explain why he believes he needs even more money. In every single province, the federal carbon tax applies. Middle class Canadians pay more than they get back, according to the parliamentary budget officer. And the prime minister, by the way, he should stop gaslighting and attacking the premiers and other common sense Canadians. He is lying when he says the carbon tax makes you better off. The parliamentary budget officer has calculated that in every province, 60% of Canadians pay more in carbon tax costs than they get back. Everybody knows it. Justin Trudeau knows it. He needs to stop lying and sit down with the premiers and admit that his carbon tax is just like him, not worth the cost.